It wasn't long ago that the idea of meat on our plate coming from a vast stainless steel bioreactor rather than a farmed animal seemed like science fiction. The notion has gone through numerous rebrandings since its early positioning as vat meat was triggered an unappealing vision of high-tech spam. Lab meat came next as a scientist perfected the recipe in small beakers within a laboratory. Then came the more appetising sounding cultured meat as investment from high profile individuals rocketed and producers positioned these products as having been brewed just like beer. Now cultured meat has evolved to cultivated meat which is the preferred terms used by CEOs in the industry today. Whatever you choose to call it, with the future of global security in question and farmland meat a key culprit in climate breakdown, slaughter-free meat is starting to look increasingly like the future of food. Rather than being part of a living, breathing, eating and drinking animal, cultivated meat is grown in anything from test tube to stainless steel bioreactors. The process is borrowed from research into regenerative medicine and in fact Professor Mark Post of Maastricht University who cultured the world's first burger in 2013 was previously working on repairing human heart tissue. Cells are acquired from an animal by harmless biopsies then placed in a warm sterile vessel with a solution called growth medium containing nutrients including salts, proteins and carbohydrates and every 24 hours or so the cell will have doubled. Cellular farming doesn't grow cuts of meat with bone and skin or fat marbled through it like succulent ribeye steak. Muscle cells require different conditions and nutrients to fat cells so they must be made separately. When pure meat or fat is harvested it is a formless paste of cells. This is why the first cultivated meat products served up have been either chicken nuggets or burgers. Some have stated the flavours however are far from the real thing. As they are produced in a sterile environment there is less risk of contamination from disease and chemicals. This is in far contrast to conventional agriculture. If you look at Salmonella, E. coli or faecal contamination as part of animal agriculture it looks much better from a cultivated meat perspective than it does from a conventional meat perspective. A spokesperson for Upside Food, the leader in the cultivated meat arena said that the nutrient profile will be similar but it will also be possible to enhance or even personalise it. They added they are exploring ways to improve the nutrient profile of their products. Whether that's less saturated fat and cholesterol or more vitamins and healthy fats. For instance, imagine if we could produce a steak with the fatty acid content of salmon. Or what if the consumer could customise the nutrient profile in their products to meet their dietary needs? As there are so few cultivated meat products on the market requiring food labelling, we have to wait to get a better understanding of the nutritional values. People in Singapore already can buy these products. Good Meat has been producing and selling its chicken in Singapore since December 2020. Both breaded chicken and shredded chicken have gone down well with the consumers. The company has already applied to the US Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, for approval in the US but no timescale has been given. Other producers say that Western countries are still ironing out the details on how regulation approval will work, but they say they'll be ready to scale up as soon as approval is given in coming years. The truth is, we can't know until mass production happens. Modelling the potential impacts of the fast moving biotech industry that's still in development is subject to many ifs and buts. One 2019 study from the University of Oxford warned that the energy used to make cultivated meats could release more greenhouse gases than traditional farming. One analyst highlighted the study assumed the use of electricity generated by fossil fuels this is highlighting the importance of renewable energy. In some scenarios, cultivated meat had a higher global warming effect, and in some scenarios a lower effect, depending on the consumption levels, expected energy use for cultivated meat, and the beef cattle system it's compared to. The study didn't take into consideration the lower land use for cultivated meats. There's the possibility to use the land from plant-based protein production nature and extra renewable energy production which in turn influences the CO2 emission of cultivated meats. Some analysts have added that while cultivated meat is no silver bullet to solve the world problem it certainly has a lot of potential directly because it offers more a sustainable alternative to conventional meat. 
It's a more effective way of converting crops into meat and therefore much less land is needed to produce these crops. But it does use more energy. For a lower carbon footprint than conventional meat, it is crucial that renewable energy sources are used in its production, including the supply chain, importantly for the production of nutrients and other ingredient needed for the culture medium. Firstly, a vegan growth medium. Until recently, in order to kickstart cell division, about 20% of the growth medium had to be fetal bovine serum drawn from the blood of a cow's fetus. Not only is this serum extremely expensive, but it's also distinctly not vegetarian or vegan. But all the major players now claim to have developed an alternative. One alternative used genetically modifying yeast to produce the necessary proteins. This technology called precision fermentation is similar to how medicine insulin is made. There's a whole new industry being created for producing vast vats of productive microorganisms. However, there's still some challenges with scaling up the alternative. And the chicken we spoke about earlier from Singapore is produced with fetal bivone serum. The owner added it's not because he wants to, but because it was included when they initially submitted their application, as they hadn't solved any of the issues then. He's waiting for regulatory approval to produce without it. The next issue is mass production. Many analysts are saying that scaling up is the next great hurdle to clear. You need to be churning out a minimum of 15 million pounds, which is 6.8 million kilos a year, at a facility. This is kind of a rule of thumb for national distribution across the US or Western Europe. This will necessitate bioreactors that hold at least 200,000 litres, which has never been done in cell culture. In Singapore right now, the largest size they're producing on is 1,200 litres, which is very small relative to the size required. Only when it's produced at scale can the price come down and compete with cheaply, intensely farmed meat. Meanwhile, Good Meat Singapore is currently running at a loss, selling hawker stall dishes for four Singapore dollars, which is £2.5. At launch, these products are expected to be expensive, but over time, it's expected to become affordable supermarket prices with economies of scale. Another challenge is the texture. Much of the world's meat consumption consists of burgers, nuggets and sausages. But what happens if you want a juicy, cultivated steak? How do we turn meaty mush into choice cuts? The companies involved are trying to optimise for sensory and consumer experience with taste, texture, flavour, profile and cost all being taken into consideration. To achieve the texture of steak, scaffolding techniques will be necessary, a way of building structure within the vessel. This scaffold will most likely be made using vegan collagen. Now that the fetal bovine serum is out the way, vegetarians could ethically speaking eat this meat if they had the appetite for it. The religious element is a little trickier. For meat to be permissible under Islamic and Jewish law, there are strict rules on how animals are slaughtered and how the meat is prepared. Cultivated meat is set to trigger lively debates among religious leaders around the world. However, some have argued cultivating meat from kosher or halal meat would solve this problem. In the Muslim majority country Qatar, they are heavily investing in the technology and building a production plant with good meat. Scientists envision that small scale conventional farming will still be used for premium meat cuts and dairy products for years to come. This transition will happen over decades and innovations rarely completely replace existing products. Cell agriculture has the potential to create a more balanced and symbiotic relationship between small-scale farmers, consumables and the planet. It's not just meat that can be cultivated. Dairy without the cow is an option. From milk to ice cream to cream cheese, Perfect Day's milk protein is already available in 5,000 stores across America. Instead of being made by cattle, it is produced by a fungus genetically programmed to create cow whey protein. Egg whites without the chicken? Precision fermentation is used by every company to make egg whites and similar products. Bluefin tuna without the fishing. The business, Finless Foods, is creating animal-free fish. The company cultures bluefish tuna cells in what it calls microbrewery-style production facility. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.